Hello and welcome again to another video from the Marketing Study Guide. In this video I'm going to have a look at how we segment a market and I'm talking about what tools and approaches and how do we actually split apart a market. Uh, my name is Jeff and I'm a long-term marketing lecturer and practitioner. Now as you probably know market segmentation is a step in the segmentation targeting and positioning process. We start with an overall market we split them into related groups of consumers and then from this set of segments we then pick the best target market for our company we then build a positioning and a marketing mix for that target market and our end goal is to improve business and profitability performance um, depending on what textbook you have you'll see that they use multiple approaches to segmentation bases uh, each of these, like geographic, there's different ways of doing that, different ways of doing demographic. Uh, I have a video that covers all of these particular uh, segmentation bases, and I list fors and against for using them. Um, but how do we do this? How do we construct that? So what are the tools that we use? Okay, so this is what this video is about. Okay, there are four main approaches that we can use. Okay, so we can use what's called cluster analysis if we have suitable data. We can use a, a solution from a market research company or agency. We can use a segmentation tree where we split the data out, or we can use internal expertise. So I'm just going to work through each of those and how they work very simply from a top level. Okay, so the first one's cluster analysis. And as it says there, it's a statistical technique. And what it's good at is it's taking a lot of data. So if we've got data from a customer database or for a large scale customer survey, okay, we might have asked them people about loyalty or awareness or how often they use their product, etc. Sales promotion. This is from a, a template that I have for free that you can get by linking, seeing the link down the bottom. But we have a lot of information about this by, by customer. And because we've got multiple variables, we can plug it into a, a statistical package that will actually able to group it for us statistically. Okay, so why would we use cluster analysis? Well, one, if we've got a lot of data that has a lot of variables, um, this is going to be the simplest approach. Uh, it'll construct for us a hybrid based segments. So it's going to use whatever variables are in there or what variables are relevant in our opinion to segment so we're going to use a combination of demographics and psychographics and behavior and benefits i'm going to put it all together into a segmentation rather than looking at simple demographics or geographic location that means we'll end up with most of the data being used rather than another segmentation base where we might look at just one or two variables it actually measures it so you can see from this output we know that's 25 percent 25 percent 30%, 20%. So we can see relative measures. It also, as we go through the analytical approach of, of, of cl the clustering methods, we're going to see which variables are interrelated. So it's actually going to give us a lot more insights uh, as a result. So it's actually going to be a powerful tool, not for just for segmenting, but also understanding the marketplace and understanding consumers. Uh, and hopefully that gives us an information edge over our competition. Now the downside, the reasons against, it's a timely process. It's not a matter of just pressing a button and there we have our segments. It's a trial and error. Okay, so there's different ways. You're thinking there are lots and lots of variables, uh, lots of customers here, and there's lots of ways of segmenting a market. If we have a lot of data, the, the number of configurations of grouping people in a, in a city or a country or a, even an age group, there are lots of ways of doing that. So it's going to take time. It's going to take a skilled person to do that who's done it before. They also need to be good with data, but we also need to look from a marketing perspective. Are these segments that we can work with? Are these segments appropriate to us? Can we uh, action them? Can we be successful with those segments? So as a result, uh, we have companies that really, A, don't have the, have the data or don't have the resources to run it, or don't have the time. And down the bottom here, 
there's probably not going to be a return on investment for a small firm to do this because the time and cost involved. And of course, you need a specialist in the software. Okay, let's have a look at a, the uh, off the shelf solution. Now, I've just picked one example here. And I picked this example because it's commonly used in marketing textbooks and consumer behavior books. It's called the uh, Values and Lifestyle. Uh, and that's the company that currently runs with it. And as you can see, each of these uh, diamonds are a group of people, a segment that has different uh, views of life, put it that way. Okay, so you can see there, um, people who like to experience things, achieving things, people just trying to get by, striving, etc. Um, and the beauty of these, they, they're multiple companies, not just this company, they have built these segments and they've built them over years. And they're based on years of research studies, so they're, they're quite robust and they're quite data driven. Um, and these agencies will, will you know, work with large companies to modify uh, this or tell you how to use it or how it connects to your industry or your company. So it's, it's set to go. So let, let's have a look at the fors and against. So the segments are there. They're done. They're validated. They've been proven over time. As I said, they're, they're ready to go. I mean, you have to pay for them and work with the company, but you can start working with these segments pretty quickly. Um, because of the various studies, they have connected a lot of consumer stuff. So these are psychographic segments, um, as you can probably guess, but they've worked with other companies and they've built in a lot of how these segments um, live, obviously, but how they also act as consumers. And we're going to get, you know, a lot of detail, a lot of rich profiling of the segments, uh, measurements down to, you know, how many people in each uh, area, location, etc. And you can work with a research company to actually do more research relevant to your company to even, you know, build this, this knowledge base. Um, on the downside, if it's a established methodology that's working well, you may find that competitors have a similar approach and you end up having a, a similar strategy as a result. Market segmentation, looking at a, differently at a, at a market can actually give you a competitive advantage if you have a different viewpoint of the segments. Um, research is not, not cheap, so that could be for a small company, it may be too costly. Um, if, it's, uh, if you have an, under, uh, a, a startup or a different type of company or you're quite innovative in what you're doing, it, it may not be a, a strong fit to the company because these segments are obviously based on you know, economic factors. And if you're an innovator as a firm, it may not connect ideally for you. Um, obviously, these, these types of studies have been built in multiple countries. Um, so you need to find a localized version. So the one I showed you before was American, and there are versions of that throughout the world. But obviously, in different countries, we have different cultures so those value segments will be quite different and this is sort of a downside because they're so invested in their model and they've built it over years they you know you, you tend to cling to your business model a little bit so as as consumers change you know they they may change the percentages of a, a segment but are they you know kind of come out with a brand new structure and as a result the way companies have got around this some of the research firms have multiple variations. So they've got the, the, the one I've just shown you, but they've also got, hey, here's something, you know, quite a bit different. It's a different approach to segmentation. Uh, predominantly still psychographic based, but it's probably going to be some options for you in large research companies. Okay, then we have a look at a segmentation tree. Uh, pretty well, it's a, a variation of decision tree. You've probably seen one before. Um, so I was just skipping ahead for you. Um, then we have a, a segmentation tree to use. That's our third option. Uh, it's a variation of a decision tree. You've probably seen one before. Um, and it's, it's a visual mechanism where we visually split branches off from the from the overall segments and go, hey, we could split older people, younger people, 
uh, educated, less educated, etc. And we progressively put together one segmentation base at a time and we just split down and down, etc. Uh, and we create branches, which is why it's called a tree. Okay, so I'll bring in the, the tree there, so fast food. We first split it into broad age groups, kids, teens, young adults, older adults. So that's our main branches. And then we go out to people who eat frequently, who rarely go out frequently. So I'm layering um, a behavioral aspect, so a demographic aspect, a, a behavioral aspect. And I've got the numbers there as segment one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's all it is. Um, I don't have to use demographics. You can use whatever you like and you could keep going. Uh, and you could call, create lots and lots of segments um, if you wanted to. It's probably not great practice, but you could do there. And the, and the beauty of this is you can vary what, what bases you use. So you can actually construct lots of these trees and then have a look at which one works the best for you. So fours and against, reason to use. It's easy to use. I mean, we can all see what's happening here. It's, it's very clear. We can use a hybrid base. So we've got demographics and we've got behaviors. We can throw in psychographics next. And we can have a combination of segmentation bases. And as I said, you can cr construct any number of trees and you can have lots of different outcomes. Um, it's also a helpful tool to sort of be thinking about the marketplace and how things things work. You can use this with and without data. Obviously, with data, it's going to be a lot more substantial and robust, and I would recommend that. But you could do it hypothetically too, just to, to sort of start thinking about the market and potential segments and targeting. And obviously, if you do it that way, it can be a very low cost uh, and fairly quick method. Okay, reasons against is uh, we've got to be careful when we choose each segmentation base. So, you know, is there a reason I looked at age groups? You know, yes or no? Is there a logic to it? So if we don't do that, we could end up with just, yeah, we've got segments, but they're groups of customers that have some characteristics in common, but they're not overly ideal for us. And as we keep going, I, I had six segments after two splits. I split them again and again, and, and suddenly I got 20, 30 segments, and they, they'll become too small. And it's going to take time. Any segmentation approach, you need to think about it. You need to um, have multiple attempts. This is not done at once, done it in five minutes. Yeah, there, guys, I have the, the marketing strategy worked out. I picked their target markets. Took me all the five minutes. That probably wouldn't go too well in a company for you. And if you're not using data, we need to come back and really validate and rethink about them. If it's just hypothetical, uh, might be fine for a university assignment or something like that. But in a real company, we would want to have a closer look and, and, and justify those. Okay, and the final thing is um, where we use internal expertise. So we've got all these people sitting around uh, constructing segments there for you. And we've usually got a lot of experience in a company. So we've got people who obviously the senior people have been in the industry for a long time and made decisions and seen things happen and run out campaigns, etc. But we've got people who work in market research, people who work with data, and then we've got a whole bunch of people who work with, with customers, people with call center, sales, customer service, relationship managers, and they've got people who work in the channels, suppliers, uh, retailers, etc. So in a large company or even a medium-sized company, we're going to have a lot of expertise and a lot of understanding of consumers. So if need be, let's use them. The beauty of, of doing that is obviously we've got the people there. We can do it fairly quickly. It'll be cheap, just management time. We don't have to get data. It's obviously easier to do because we're just sitting around. It could be done in a day or we probably want to revisit it a few times over a couple of weeks maybe. Um, ideal for small companies who do not have the ability to get the data or analyze the data or, uh, you know, spend a lot of money. This works well when we've got, you know, knowledgeable people. And it may be our only option if we don't have data. And I would suggest this is commonly used in small to medium um, sized companies, hopefully with a nice mix of people. That's 
Okay. One of the reasons not to use it. So we'll touch on that now. Reasons against, obviously we're not data-based. Uh, so we're running a risk there. So it's not as robust as the other methods we've been talking about. Um, it's a little bit of experience and a little bit of guesswork. So our segments are, you know, going to be, oh, I think this segment's, you know, people this age and this sort of lifestyle. It's not as precise. It may not give us the same understanding of the marketplace and we may miss opportunities because we're basing it on current knowledge and prior knowledge. Um, how well we do this depends on the expertise. Um, potentially, people might be thinking back about, you know, prior encounters or things that happened a few years ago or things that stand out. So it could possibly be outdated um, and that may lead to just wrong segments or misinformed segments. And in some companies, depending on the culture, you might have senior people who go, I know better. I'm not going to have a call center person in here telling me about things, etc." Um, and they're the people who are the front line. In some companies, that's not a problem and everybody be involved and you're going to use all their expertise. In some companies, unfortunately, there's still a hierarchical type approach, which is not ideal. Okay, so what are the best approaches? I've color-coded these. Obviously, I've, if you've got the data and can use cluster analysis, that's um, green, that's probably the best. These two in orange, uh, gold, they're, they're probably the next two. Again, we're using established solutions or using data with a segmentation tree. Remember, all of these were playing around with things. And as a last choice, um, we're relying on that. But as I said, small, medium companies, that's all they can do. Okay, so I've got lots more videos on segmentation, etc. There's a link underneath for a free uh, template for cluster analysis, so you can try that. And uh, good luck with your studies.